What's good? We're back for another ADP review for you today. As per usual, we're using the DLF ADP. Uh, they use an average of six drafts to come up with these numbers. So make sure you subscribe to what we're doing over here because we've been putting these out and we'll continue to put them out all off season. Uh, they'll continue to change as the off season narratives build and teams uh, start getting hot and, and not. And obviously we have uh, the NFL draft season looming large here. So we'll have after this uh, session of ADP here. The next one will be interesting to see how it affects this session, which is why I thought it was important to get this one in. Uh, we did skip a week or skip a month, however, with the free agents coming up and we were knee deep in uh, rookie breakdowns and such. So I didn't want that ADP to come out and then just be kind of washed out by maybe some big free agent moves, but didn't didn't really affect anything. So when we do talk about things, there will be a, a gap in um, ADP, but we're going to pick it up from the last time we did an episode and compare those ADPs. We'll be doing mock drafts here shortly. Uh, one coming up, I believe, next week. And then as soon as the NFL draft happens, we will be mocking before you fuck it up um, as much as possible. So be sure to get involved with that. You ready to do this, Jay Wayne? Let's do it. Uh, real quick, if you are listening on the podcast, uh, we do have a visual aid over on the YouTubes. Um, we're getting 24 players at a time, so you can follow along better there. Um, and again, you should hop over there, help your boys out and uh, hit four that subscribe, four. like and comment. All right, let's get it rolling. Just no Round. thumbs down. <laughs> I mean, if you're really that butthurt about it, you do you. I uh, can't help miserable humans. <laughs> All right. So number one. The top five pretty much remain the same. Uh, Dalvin and Kamara uh, swap spots. We got Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, top five. Got to get those running backs. Oh, for sure. Uh, six is where the change starts. Justin Jefferson now becomes the number one dynasty wide receiver. Um, he moves up from 10 to six. Uh, you have... Cam Akers making another big jump where he was a fringe kind of first rounder and he goes from 12 to seven. So you had that block of RBs. You had one receiver. Got to get that other RB in there. Um, and then an AJ Brown jump, which I have been discussing and calling for. Uh, he's my favorite out of uh, all these guys, especially over DK. That's uh, just my personal preference. Um, but AJ Brown finally does jump DK. He jumps Devante and Tyree kill uh, to take the second spot in the dynasty wide receiver hierarchy. Uh, he goes from uh, 13th to eighth. Uh, so he was the top of the second round. He's moving way up into the first here, back half of the first uh, DK then comes in at nine. So that, that, that could be a battle. We see all off season going back and forth. Devante Adams. Uh, he stays at 10 stays in the first round, but no longer the uh, first wide receiver off the board. So, uh, interesting there. He was the number one receiver for most of the all off season. And then you have uh, Tyreek and Derrick Henry rounding out the first round. Uh, so one more running back in there and, and the biggest receivers in dynasty in there uh, all rounding it out. Thoughts on the first round until. Well, uh, let's see real quick. Justin Jefferson, all the way. It's it's six. Is, is it, is it time? It, should you sell that dude and try and get like, one of those top five guys or like, or nah, you just holding. Uh, well, that's not really the point of the exercise right here. Uh, but I like that you're thinking about it. It just uh, seems like, I don't know if it could get any higher and well, obviously maybe. it can't get any higher, but I mean, that's kind of what the deal is with these running backs that obviously can't get any higher, but you don't sell them. Uh, he's that high because he's an asset and he's young. So that's why they're up there. That's why DK him and AJ Brown are up there. Um, I mean, I have Justin Jefferson, but if I could get one of those guys, one of these top, top guys, well, I, I, I would assume that if you could get one of those guys, then you would do that because they're ahead of him in ADP. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even, even some of these other guys in this first round, I, I could see, it just seems like he's never going to get any more valuable than this. Well, and I don't know if he can live up to this. And, like, and I, yeah, no, well, that's, that's more or less the conversation. I, I'm, same thing I'm, with I acres at seven, like, absolutely would be ready to move off him if someone's going to value him that high. Cause I don't think he can live up to that ADP. So because he's a running back, I could see it a little bit more the, 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 you know, Oh, he's peak value. So you have to sell, like I can understand that with some guys, but these top, these high end wide receivers, like, yeah, of course his value can't get any higher, but he's right now, he's probably one of the best. So you, where, where should his value go? You know, uh, just my thoughts. You get, what else you got? Anything? 
Uh, I'd still take DK okay. over AJ Brown. I'm, I, I'm I'm banking on Russell being there, so sure. that that's that would be my argument. But I can't really get mad at you. It is interesting to see these young guys just push all these 28 year old guys down down the 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 list. Yeah, well, and, your uh, ten your ten years of having that receiver is almost up for those other guys, so they're getting pushed down. Where does this uh, ten years of receiver uh, come from? When I don't know. when that's why you got to draft him, Jason. On, when the hit rate is based on a one top twenty four season, how can you be expected to have a ten year guy on your team? I just I don't get it. Let's revisit the Justin Jefferson buy sell thing uh, after we finish round two. You ready for round All two? Right. Let's do it. All right, round two, fight. Uh, They're Nick coming out Chubb. with a new Mortal Kombat, I think. Oh, I'm excited about it. <laughs> I think that might have been more... Um, who, what was the one with Ken and Ryu? And, uh, street, I think that was more Street Fighter. Mm. Than, uh, Finish anyway. it. That's Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Flawless Finish this victory. round, too. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Jesus. Nick Chubb. Uh, he gets knocked out of the first round. Uh, checks in at 13 or 2-1, however you want to look at that. Uh, then we have a gaggle of second year players here and all but one are running backs. Uh, we have Dobbins, Swift, Gibson uh, and CD Lamb. And then to follow that, to end that, it's uh, Antonio Gibson. Uh, so all those guys running backs, obviously CD Lamb in that order. Is that a, gag- uh, that's how they're coming is it a gaggle the or a gander? I, I think I think What's it's a good gaggle. for the goose is good for the gaggle. I mean, I think gander. gaggle gander. I don't I mean, I think I don't. Nobody says nobody says and a gander of players here. They say gaggle. That's the that's the nobody phrase. saying either one of those. <laughs> oh, gaggle for sure. <laughs> gaggles gaggles in there. Sounds um, like something you're going to see in a weird porno. All right. Getting back to here. Gibson out of those out of that. Uh, jumble gaggle gander of uh, of players. There was the only one to have a, a big jump up. Those other guys were kind of all they already. They've just been jumbling themselves around depending on who's picking them. Um, but he jumped up from 23 Gibson. That is from 23 to 16 here. Uh, so that was, you know, he, he made a big jump and that was interesting to get in, in that gaggle of second year guys there. Uh, that was that then knocks Stefan digs down a slot to, uh, 17 or 18 here. Um, and then we have uh, Travis Kelsey, Ridley, Zeke, next players off the board. And then Aaron Jones jumps back up into the second round after the news of his lease being renewed for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, so he's he's back in with the pack, uh, which is interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly have some Aaron Jones talks over the uh, offseason here. DJ Moore uh, jumping up from uh, the 31st spot to grab the 211 or 23 overall. Interested to see what caused that. I know the first time we did this without Big Co, he's not here again tonight. But <clears throat> DJ Moore was somebody that that stood out to him for not being high enough. But I'm interested to you know figure out what what do you think uh, maybe caused this DJ Moore jump up here. And then Clyde edwards alaire rounds out the second round. And in my opinion, I think he belongs with that cluster up there. Um, the gaggle, the gaggle, uh, the gander, oh, oh, oh. Uh, the jumble, however you want to the group for me right now, Clyde Edwards. So we, we, we talked in length about him last go around. We did the ADP stuff, but I think he's being slept on and I think his situation is still great. And I'd probably feel pretty comfortable taking ahead of all of those guys that were just jumbled up in there, or at least have his name right there uh, with all of those guys. So thoughts on the second round, Jay Wayne. Yeah, I definitely can't argue with about, Clyde Edwards being in that grouping or the, the uh, whatever the intersecting two graphs are. What is that? Uh, the Venn diagram. The Venn up there in the Venn. Uh, cause, because he could easily be a first round pick next year. Like, I don't, people just mad <coughs> hating for no reason. And we've, we've talked extensively about that. Uh, real quick, Nick Chubb getting knocked out of the first round. I see, I see the slide a little bit, you know, on paper, he's a 25 year old running back with a serious knee injury. With Not another as stud, as those other guys, another stud running back out there and, and uh, is on the last year of his deal. So we're not going to, we're not sure what's going to happen after the season About to be and, a second year running back. So right. just throw him away or Don't second want, nobody contract likes running a, back. Right. Yeah. Nobody likes a second contract running back. So I, I, on paper, I see the slide, but when you watch him on the field, it's just undeniably nobody likes him unless it's Christian McCaffrey, second year running back, Dalvin cook, second contract running back, Alvin Kamara, second contract running back, uh, which Aaron I Jones, him. second contract running back, bounced back up from the second contract, Derek Henry, second contract running back. Nobody likes those guys. You got to get rid of them, but they're all first rounders. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and I would assume I get it, though. I get it. I understand it before you say you're an idiot. I get it. I get it. He's pro- I would think Nick's probably going to get a second contract with the Browns. It would be pretty dumb not to do that. So um, then, you know, I'm with you. I don't know what to do with all these rookies. I, I, I like that Gibson is now actually come up there. Someone's p- putting some respect on his name. If you're going to if you're going to put Swift at 15 and he's on this terrible garbage of a team Detroit Lions then you got to give my man Gibson some respect being on the, the Washington football team because all he did was score a touchdown every what seven times he touched the ball or something ridiculous like that like <laughs> he's remember. just he's just an incredible talent and proved that he can handle way more than he was ever thrown in college and so I think I think that was nice to see him get that respect. And uh, and I'm curious, I'm curious to get into the Aaron Jones discussions because you and I had a conversation off offline about Aaron Jones and versus another guy and me being excited that he finally got paid and he's tied oh, up. We'll with get Matt into LaFleur. those with Mox. Don't you worry. But then, you know, Aaron Rodgers may not be there for much longer. So what's the appeal if Aaron Rodgers is gone and, and just every year we're just find a way not to draft Aaron Jones. And, and I try to find a way to do it. And you like make fun of me for it. And every year he just comes through for you. So how many more years, you know, he is getting old now at this point. So that's interesting. And then, you know, DJ Moore jumping up, people just hate Teddy Bridgewater and they, they, they I mean, like I don't know what else would have Sammy spawned D. the, the big jump, I guess, Curtis Samuel leaving, uh, that, that's and and maybe some, Sam Darnold love, but I feel like this ADP might have been out before that the Sam Darnold uh, stuff really fair w- w- took over. But the Curtis Samuel free agent stuff that could easily have catapulted DJ Moore. So way, way to get to the bottom of that gumshoe. <laughs> All right. Well, round three. Uh, yeah, round three. So just real quick, I just wanted to um, again get to the, the the point of this isn't that you know we want to get into details about buying or selling or you know it's just more so to get familiar with the market how it's moving uh where the advantages and disadvantages are like you said you know hey should you sell Justin Jefferson that's the kind of thought process that i want to spawn this not not to have lengthy conversations about what you should be doing with these guys but more so to sp- pique your interest of hey should you be buying or selling these guys so you know if if you think that uh you know, you would sell Justin Jefferson for Dobbin, Swift, Gibson, uh, Clyde Edwards, Alaire. Then you know they're I mean, probably not is. straight up. I'm gonna need something else, but I don't hate trying to get a, a young stud running back. Plus, you know, or, or, yeah. I mean, obviously with the value the way it is, but I mean, I, I would if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me if you're gonna tell me I can get those guys straight up for Justin Jefferson, I'm probably gonna do it. Uh, but I know where the value is, so I'm gonna try to eke out more uh, on Justin Jefferson. So that's again like, part of the exercise. You know, right now that the for he's a first rounder. There's a round difference. If you're playing within those first two rounds, it, you know you got to pay to play. Right. So, or Justin Jefferson plus what gets me CMC Taylor or Saquon or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like that just seems like he's inching up towards that, that value. And, and I think I'd be willing to, I, I think I'd be cashing out otherwise just hold, hold for dear life. But all right, let me get that round three card again. Uh, round three. All right, we got our first rookie appearing on round three here. He's up from where his last, his initial inaugural rookie appearance came from. He's up to 3 1 uh, or 25. He's up from 28. So he's climbing spots, climbing, climbing, climbing. Rookie fever is, a, is a, upon us here. Uh, we're so close to the draft, and he will continue to rise once he gets a landing spot. If it's even halfway decent, he's going to rise even more. Um, even if it's not, he's probably still going to rise. If it's good, it's, he's going to shoot right up to that gaggle that we just talked about uh above um and then so we have miles sanders kittle and michael thomas all basically remaining the same in the third round there uh patrick mahomes jumps back up to 29 uh previous spot he held months before um nuke dropping like a sack of potatoes uh he he, he's at 30 he was at 19 so Apparently JJ Watt coming there really uh, just and, and AJ Green just plumbing <laughs> plumbing at James, the stock. James Connor, James Connor, yeah. Uh, everybody uh, hates. You know he's getting yeah. old too, and people who aren't as giddy about Kyle uh, Kyler, Kyler Murray. Murray, not Kyle. The, the, you know they start they started to sour on him as the season went on. Oh, can he really read defenses? Can he you know play better than he is now? And and Nuke was still doing his thing, but when you see a guy start getting old, people are just bailing. They're just out. That's why you're seeing 
you're going to see a lot of these older running uh, wide receivers slipping down into the third, fourth rounds and fifth rounds is just even more yeah. incentive to go running back early. If you can. Exactly. Well, that was a point I was going to make later, but love it. It's a tease. Um, so the next two rookies to join the party at this juncture uh, again, earlier than before Jamar chase uh, up from 40 to 31 and Travis ETN from 36 to 32 and chase has supplanted ET overall, which was not the case uh, before. Um, so Mixon holds it down and 33, same spot. He has been on previous episodes. And then finally, Austin Eckler makes an appearance here down uh, from 29 to 34. This seems like super strong value for Austin Eckler here. Uh, he was fantastic, went on the field, and they did nothing but upgrade their offensive line. Uh, so not that I think he's going to, he's just the, between the tackle grinder necessarily They're they're you know, they could be looking to even add another one of those, but the, the pass catching ability and he does is a good, just overall running back. And I think this is fantastic value for Austin Eckler here. And then speaking of value T Higgins at 35, seems like great value. Like he was absolutely unreal with Joe Burrow last year. Um, and without him. They, and without him, they should be getting some help on the offensive line if they know what's good for him. Uh, I like I like T. Higgins. I think he could easily be up there with the CDs and the uh, all that group of rookies that were up there before. Uh, T. Uh, really shined, and like I think that's a good point. After Burrow went out, still a very startable asset. So this guy was uh, just money in the bank, shorty what you drank. Uh, Terry McLaurin rounds out the third round, deservingly slow. Love some scary Terry. Uh, we got you know, probably the best quarterback he's ever had, at least fantasy for fantasy points going up and down. But Terry doesn't care who his quarterback is. He just crushes. Uh, so third round thoughts, Jay Wayne. Yeah, glad to see Terry in there. <coughs> Love that guy's work ethic. I'm excited for him to 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 stay healthy and, and see what he can do in this upcoming season. Um, let's see. Najee Harris, we predicted that, predicted the rise. It's going to keep rising. Um, Mixon, I think, is still – a value every year we're like by mixing still decent, still decent value. Like he could, he could catapult up a round or two for no sure. more geo geos out of there. Now, you know, they, I'm sure they'll, you know, find a way to give it to somebody else, Travion or whomever. Well, I, I, I can't be mad at the Bengals for being hesitant with mixing, even though they've paid him because he doesn't stay healthy. He always there. does seem to, it always is something with him, but if it were ever to not be something, it'd Ooh. be something great. Throw my man yes. the ball. Give him some run, and, and just like we just talked about, they should be drafting an offensive lineman if they know what's good for him. Should help. Um, and I'm with Joe, you there. With, should help with, Joe Mixon out. I mean, but there's some talk that they're bringing in Chase or Pitts or somebody, and it's like, dude, just build, bolster the trenches, my guys. Come on. Well, they got some guys coming back off injury too that they haven't had to get put into that lineup, I believe. And and they're they're a young group and they've have put a lot of capital into it so we'll we'll see how that shapes yeah, out. But Joe Burrow was dealing with like the second most pressure of anyone in the yeah, league. Yeah, just get backs. Sewell or or try to trade back a couple of picks. I know they don't love the Bengals aren't a big trading franchise bunch of idiots. Uh but move back and get Slater or and you can move him to guard if you want. You know, do whatever you want to do. I mean, just get more offensive. Nobody I heard somebody, I think it was DP today, Dan Patrick talking like you saw Patrick Mahomes against a decent defense that could bring pressure with no offensive line, even that made him struggle and look average at times. Like, I mean, yeah, he made some ridiculous throws and his guys should have caught it, but you have to have protection to win games. And that's, that's uh, that makes good guys. Great. Brady with no protection, garbage, you know, he can move around in the pocket and be good, but you're not, you're not going to win without protection. Right. He certainly didn't go to a team with bad protection. Right. Well, they weren't great, but they, they really came around and then they, they invested in their offensive line right off the rip and he was great. Uh, so and anyway, I think, I think Eckler to round it off. Uh, he that's recency bias for you right there because because he didn't crush all year long. So they're like, uh, he's no good. So yeah, I mean, he could easily be up there in that second round gaggle. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> round four, <laughs> round four. Fight. All right. James Robinson. Uh, he goes up one spot to four, one or 37 overall, if you're more into numbers. Uh, so we got, you know, boom, here it comes another rookie. He makes his inaugural appearance right here. Uh, Javante Williams catapulting up the, uh, the board here as rookie fever takes over. It was weird that we didn't see him last time. Now, like I said, we did skip a month, so he may have been just slowly climbing 
up that glacier with his ice shoes and his ice pick. And uh, so he seems to be here arriving, uh, which, you know, properly rated, probably at least with the rookies, like give me, give me ETN and, and Jamar and Najee. And then we'll start discussing Javante probably might take a couple of these receivers over him. Not sure yet. Haven't gotten there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think once you get into these rookie mocks or, or mock, startup mock drafts, which we've been doing with the patrons over on patreon.com slash EFF dynasty, hit us up on the discord channel and join these mocks with us as we're practicing this whole off season to get ready for, for actual drafts. But what you see is it, you know, come round four, the running backs are drying up. And so you're like, well, here's a guy who could potentially be a number one guy and, and a stud and has a good, yeah. good makeup and people are in on him. So there already is that built in value and no waps uh, in the fourth round. Just dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's dry running backs. Anyway. <laughs> so it makes sense. It makes sense. And like you said, it's probably overdue and it's probably properly rated. All right. Godwin down from uh, 32 to 39. So a little drop there. Um, free agent fallout from Kenyon Drake causes some more Jacobs slide. Uh, if I could get a maybe a Goo Goo Dolls drop there. <laughs> slide. <laughs> I know that song. Oh, man, it's so annoying. <laughs> um, but he's down to 40 from 22. Darren Waller, if Big Co was here, he'd say he's not high enough. I'll do it for him. Get him higher. Um, obviously, tight end premium, even higher. Um, Darren Waller is fantastic. Uh, Allen Robinson. It up. No, Allen Robinson stays put ADP wise and team wise. Uh, so he's right back where he was. Uh, Kyle motherfucking Pitts, baby. He's on the list. He didn't make it before, but he's on it this time. You know, maybe the best prospect we've ever, ever seen. I mean, it's just, you know, just absolutely smitten. Everybody's smitten with Kyle. Can't, can't, can't miss with Kyle. That's what, that's what they call him. Can't miss Kyle. That's what it feels like. And just keeps the, your- le- the legend just keeps growing. Like, I don't think he dropped a ball. He's, you know, if he's, he's, I think he might be eight foot tall now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but you watch that, uh, that rookie show or whatever, and he's out there like giving people advice and trying to help them out and encourage them. And like, he's just, it's just like, Oh my God, if I wasn't already in love with Kyle Pitts, just watching this oh, dude man. do his thing and be makes cool. It hard, makes it hard for you not to just be rather exuberant about the player. Yeah. I mean, most of the time when everyone is going one way, I try to go the other way. I hate crowds, uh, but I'm going to stand in the line for yeah, Kyle Pitts, I'm, I mean, however long this ride takes, I'm going to pay extra for the VIP tickets. Yeah, I gave him the MFR. I gave him the MFR here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't, can't, I can't, you can't go wrong with Kyle Pitts. Take him as high as you feel you need to. Yeah, agreed. All right. Brandon Ayuk jumps up from 49 to 44, like that, like where everybody's heads at there. Love some Ayuk. Uh, he's always on sleeper right now when we're doing these mock drafts. You used to go find him, pick him up. And put them on your team. Uh, long T Higgins is another one of those guys. Got to scroll and set that cue, kids. Got to. Um, so then we got like you were talking. Here's that. Here's that. Here's another gaggle of those little bit older receivers. You know, you got Amari Keenan, um, David Montgomery falls in there. Uh, Mike Evans, Juju, you know, Juju, not that old, but you know, just another group of those. Allen Robinson was just right up above those guys. You know, Godwin was above those guys. So there's a juicy spot of wide receivers here that you know, hey. Maybe it is kind of tantalizing to not take to, to, you know, to not take A.J. Brown when you were up there because he the value he fell down because people took running backs. But, you know, there's still a couple of good running backs left. And if you don't take them, you're not going to get any of them. Uh, hopefully you can get Austin Eckler still. Uh, but, you know, th- these guys help. Uh, take some of that pressure off a little later. And then as you go further down the line, obviously we're always into, you know, finding wide receivers because there are so many throughout the league, but there there are some pretty good uh, premier ones down here and don't want mine to get lost in that shuffle. His glow has been slowly uh, petering out and uh, it is, it is, it has gone out. And well, if you you didn't have him on your team, you just don't even care. You assume he's bad and you have no idea how good he fucking was all goddamn year long. Yeah, a couple of bad for the games, aggression. but everybody, everybody has some bad games. Um, the league but, winner. So those guys hit 45 to 49. Uh, interesting juju there. I guess just the age goes back to the Steelers. Got to wait it out a year. Feels like a buy, but 
I don't know. Chase Claypool, another Steelers receiver, grabs the last spot in the top 50 here. And Devonta Smith, we're going to give you some bonus ones. <laughs> That's That should be good for a thumbs up somewhere. It's more than 50. More did we, we did more than we're saying. Yeah. Uh, Devonta well, never exceeds the thumbnail. <laughs> Usually it's clickbait. Devonta Smith comes in uh, bonus player. He's at 51. He was 50 the last time we did this. Um, so I found that interesting. Um, and you want you want some round four recap or you want me to run out the other bonus players here? Well, kind of my recap kind of runs into some of that. And, and just to bring back the point of the of the late you know, wide receiver one, a Rob and, and Amari Keenan Evans, Judy Godwin, Cortland Sutton's at 52, Kenny G's at 56. Like these are guys that could potentially be your number one wide receiver and you can get them this late. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So some, so some bonus, uh, for your pleasure, Kenny G, like you said, 56 Lamar drops out of the top 50. He was in there before uh, he drops down to 78. Um, quite then the you drop have, there. <laughs> Jerry Judy was on the list a few months ago. He's down to 53. Um, so, but he's, he's staying strong there. So I like that. Not nobody getting too mad about, uh, them boys having a bad situation. And Jerry had some decent games. He's just, Getting a little shade. They, they didn't have a whole lot going on offensively over there. Deontay Johnson uh, was previously in the top 50. He's dropped down to uh, the 54 range here, which, you know, great value there. Ben, Ben's back. And we know we've seen, we talked about it a million times. Deontay screwed up continuously and Ben just kept targeting him. And underneath, uh, short to intermediate throws is Deontay Johnson can make a living there. And that seems like Ben wants to do That's I think that's great value there. And then Kareem Hunt was another uh, list maker on the top 50 previously. And he's all the way down uh, to 59. And then a couple more rookies just to, you know, round out a couple of those higher end rookies, Rashad Bateman at 58 and Jalen Waddle at 64. Any thoughts on uh, closing arguments? Hmm. Sell Justin Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, Bateman sliding, man. I think that thing's going to keep sliding. I think you'll probably see Terrace Marshall slide up here uh, before. Unless yeah, one I, of them- I almost he already is tr- uh, trending up there. I, I almost put him on here. I think he was in the 70s or 80s. Uh, I should have thrown and, it on there. Unless one of them gets drafted to the Ravens, that'll be a huge <laughs> bummer. Uh, Which is kind of Bateman and Marshall have been those guys that have been floated there a little bit. So Right. They got of, a late first rounder, and they, they've actually said they want to grab wide receivers in this draft. So it's like, just don't grab the ones I like, please. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, that's that's all I got, man. I tried to yeah. interject in there when I could. Uh, what else you got in some summary? Not, not much, man. Just just the fact that, you know, the the younger running backs that anybody wants get eaten up quick. And then all of a sudden you are looking in the third and the fourth round, which I don't think Najee will stay in the third. He's already right at the top mm-hmm. of it. Um, and then, you know, nobody likes Miles Sanders right now. Mixon's a guy that I like. I like I like Austin Eckler. So if those I like those values right in there, but I don't you know, I don't know if they'll stay there. I think typically they're probably going to get pushed up because the running backs will run out. And then it's like, fuck, I need a running back. James Robinson at four one seems like good value. But, you know, there's just there's so many receivers that you can make up for almost turning a blind eye and saying, I see these receivers, but I don't really see them. Let me get at least one other running back. And then I can, you know, from there I can figure it out. I don't need to go four running backs in a row. If it doesn't make sense, I don't need to go three running backs in a row. If it doesn't make sense, play the good value. If if it, if it, if the board works out that way, uh, you know, make it work for you. And then you can find the receivers and the Ayuks, the Debo's, the, Portland Sutton's the, you know, the Kenny G's, the Jerry Judy's, the, you know, there's deal double G's, right? <laughs> group that said, well, the fuck the police. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, uh, you know, clay pull down here at 50 seems like a nice, nice value that oh, yeah. be, might even drop down a little bit in season, uh, po- possibly when the Steelers offense is maybe not super great. And Deontay Johnson has resumed and, and just Juju still there. Yeah, um, I mean, everybody makes the argument that, you know, Claypool will never score four touchdowns again in a game. Like, I don't think Ben Roethlisberger is throwing four touchdowns in the <laughs> again either. So, yeah, probably not. But uh, still still a strong stud of a player. And with with the, with the ceiling, we haven't even seen. I guess we've seen the ceiling, but but he can he can he can get back there, I think, or close to it. So I'd be willing to buy some cheap or Claypool because you're right. 
<laughs> probably going to go down season. Roethlisberger's like, hey, hey, come back this way a little bit. You know, let me. Yeah. Ah, here, there's Deontay. There's there he is right down right right there in front of me. Let me hit him. Little jackrabbit who's always open. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, after we get after we get out of these areas, you know, you have a couple more running backs that might have a little juice left in them. You know, maybe maybe some James Conner, maybe uh, Chase Edmonds down a little bit here. Those guys are now in the same spot battling it out. Um, you know, so there's not a whole lot of running backs after this. Montgomery was in there and it just it dries up right. quick. And then you're just stabbing like, at Leonard Fournette's and the Ronald Joneses. And, you know, that could be great. Now they've Melvin added Gordon. You know, Kenneth, to the four. Yeah. Yeah. But now there's some other running backs, some rookies that you're that you're going to be entertaining. And then after that, it's just a bunch of crap shoots of hopefully maybe you could get a little, you know, pass catching satellite Naheen Hines kind of roll that lightning in a bottle for a season or two from a guy like that. But you know, it's, it's, it's tough sledding after this, uh, after that upper echelon of running backs to really find one. And there may be a few, you know, a very finite amount of them throughout the whole rest of the process that really come through for you uh, week in and week out. So anyway, that's going to wrap up uh, the, latest edition of the top 50 ADP here uh, obviously not super flex uh, probably should have stated that in the beginning uh, but anyway we appreciate you guys hanging out with us we'll be back with a uh, rookie super flex tight end premium rookie mock here within a week or so and then we'll be on to the draft and be mocking it up before we fuck it up uh, continuously so subscribe to the channel five star review on iTunes if you're if you're rocking with us we four, appreciate four. you guys and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.